Hello, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. I was trying to to connect to the medium, but I am having kind of uh troubles with the connection. And I don't know if it's because it's saying that it's going to rain, but I don't know if it's true because um <clears throat> here it's not like uh we don't have this kind of uh, rain in these days because it's kind of a uh, hot. So I don't know if it's going to rain tonight because it's not something that we have uh, in this kind of days, but good evening. But I don't know why I am having troubles with my, con my connection because I have just uh, one special connection for the job that I am doing on the night. Uh, but I have the, the alert about the raining so I don't know if that is the thing with the internet because it was functioning very good uh, a couple of minutes ago. So I don't know why it's just not functioning right now. But I'm here on the new session. So we are beginning a new week. This is the new week. Um, and we are going to uh, work with the... Um, Oh, okay, that's okay, don't worry. Okay, I was saying that we are beginning the week number two. This is the second week of this uh, course. So we are uh, in the middle of this month because uh, you know that we have four uh, weeks to complete all the activities that we have on the platform. So uh, we are going to complete this uh, week and we are going to have the middle of the job done. So we are going to uh, work on the activities that we have on the platform in the section number a uh, three because you know that we are going to complete a section number three this week and we are going to Excuse me. Are you tell me to... tell me Okay, I think I'm having problems with the connection because I didn't uh, listen the whole thing. Okay, I'm here again. I don't know why I am having troubles with the connection because I, I have the whole thing. And it says that the connection is okay. But I don't know why it's giving me troubles right now. And I'm checking and it says that it's okay. So it's kind of weird because I have the whole thing, but I don't know what is the uh, true problem because it's supposed that I sent um, 
like a request to the company and they come to my home and it's supposed that they fix this problem, but I think it is not fixed. Okay, we're going to try to continue with this uh, with this session. I hope that it doesn't have uh, so much problems because uh, I don't know, it's kind of uh, complicated in uh, this uh, place, but we are going to continue with this part. So uh, the previous week, that is the week number one, we have completed four uh, days of working on different topics. And the last topic was related to the simple past. We were talking about simple past and we have uh, different, um, we have different activities, but in this case, uh, we just have seen the first activity that is related to the last summer in which we were like, um, we were like reading something. So we are going to see the second activity. I'm going to show you what is the second activity. I said that, um, I'm going to use that that activity there, but we're going to see it right now. So this is the second activity that we had for the last week. So we are going to do it right now. I'm going to um, put this one a little bigger because it's necessary that you read this information. And you are going to read this part and it's related to uh, a straight dog. So you are going to read this um photograph and then we are going to uh, complete the two activities that we have in this uh, document. So, vamos a leer esta primera parte. Vamos a tratar de leer la primera parte y luego vamos a contestar las dos partes que vienen en la parte de abajo. Primero voy a dejarles que solo eh, vean más que todo la parte de arriba del artículo y luego vamos con las otras dos actividades que es la de el uh, pasado de los de los verbos que tenemos ahí y luego el verdadero y falso so I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to read this article and then we're going to continue vamos a leer el artículo y luego continuamos
Okay, I'm going to have the uh the camera off for a couple of minutes so in case that we can like I don't know, it is not like it's going to function because I have this uh, problem and it's saying a lot of time that it's not working, but we're going to see. So this is the um the article, and in this case, we have uh, this information that is about a stray dog. In this case, when we're talking about a stray dogs, we are talking about the uh, dogs that live on the street and it doesn't have a family. And in this case, we have a lot of information here about this stray dog. And it's talking about Matthew and Fiona last summer in which they found this stray dog. So in this case, we're saying that uh, last summer, Matthew and Fiona went on holiday to Spain. They stayed in a small cottage. One day, Matthew went for, for a long walk. He found a dog. It was lost. It was a stray dog. It waved its tail. It followed Matthew home. Fiona liked the dog and she gave it some food. It ate the food very quickly. It's a down outside their front door. At 10 p.m., it was cold. Fiona let the dog inside. It sat beside her on the sofa. It was a girl dog. They gave her a name, Hilda. Hilda stayed in the cottage with them. Six days later, it was time to go home, back to England. Fiona took Hilda to a dog rescue center. Sadly, they had no place for Hilda, but they offered to help. They transported Hilda to England, um, to Fiona and Matthew's house. Fiona and Matthew paid the dog rescue people a fee. The fee was 500. Now, Hilda lives with Matthew and Fiona. She slept on the on the bed and eats pedigree tum and nice dog biscuits. Matthew takes her for a long walk every day and she sits on Fiona's knee in the evenings. Matthew, Matthew and Fiona love Hilda and Hilda loves them. So in this case, we have this um, interesting uh, history about a stray dog that found a family on a different place because they were on vacations and in this case they found this dog on the streets and they feel the disconnection and in that moment they didn't have the opportunity to take Fiona home because it was kind of complicated for them because they were from a different place but uh, someone uh, helped them to uh, get this dog to their house. So in this case, they paid uh, amounts of money and then the dog is on their home in a different country. And it's kind of a um, happy ending in this story. But the thing is that we are going to see two different things about the information that we are reading on this um, article or in this part. And we have these two activities. One is related to find the uh, path of the verbs that we have on that uh, part of the image. Vamos a encontrar los verbos o las formas pasadas de los verbos que estaban en la en el artículo. En este caso, ya nosotros conocemos algunos de estos verbos, ya estamos acostumbrados a estos verbos en pasado, así que no va a ser tan complicado. Y la otra es decir si las oraciones son verdaderas o falsas y en el caso de las falsas las vamos a corregir con la información que ya leímos. So, in this case, we are going to look for the two activities. Vamos a ver las dos actividades. La primera es la parte eh, de los verbos en pasado y la siguiente es del verdadero o falso. I'm going to give you five minutes. Les voy a dar cinco minutos para que puedan ver las dos actividades, la de los verbos en pasado y la de los verdaderos y falsos. 
After that time, you're going to help me with the answers. Hi, Liz. Good evening. Good evening. Miss, what is the meaning of a small cottage? A cottage. C O T T H G E. Okay, I'm going to tell you the the meaning for that. Um, in that case, remember that they are on vacation. So, um, es como una casa rural, una casa pequeña o una casa que um, podemos encontrar en el campo. O incluso lo podemos eh, traducir como una cabaña. Hostal. Ah, puede ser también, solo que en este caso es como eh, estas casas más pequeñas. Teacher, eh, ¿y de niños Wagwit? I don't know. Ah, Wag. En ese caso es mover la cola, porque estaba moviendo la cola. Es este me, el, el, el movimiento que hacen los perros con la cola. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, which questions? In this activity, we don't have questions. We just have these two parts. Solo tenemos estas dos partes. Una que es... Ah, you can see the activity. Give me a second. I'm going to stop this one. Voy a detener esto por un momento. Denme un momento y yo lo voy a volver a poner. Y voy a volver a compartir. Tal vez así ya les aparece a todos. Dicho lo que pasa es que a mí me parecía de muy abajo ahí, ok. Ok. Thanks. You're welcome.
Luego de Molibenar. Ah, in the case of if way its tail is referring to uh, the action that the dog eh, perform when they see you. Es cuando mueven la cola, es el meneo de la cola, es lo que hacen los perros cuando no ven, cuando están felices, bueno, en este caso cuando están felices, pero básicamente es menear la cola. Okay, we're going to see the first part. Vamos a ver la primera parte de los verbos en pasado. En el caso de la primera parte donde tenemos nuestros verbos y lo vamos a poner en pasado, in this case, we have the same verbs on the paragraph and they are in past. So, in this case, we're just going to say the words uh, in the correct form in the past. Vamos a decir los verbos que aparecen ahí. O, oh, en este caso, um, because I have this problem with the connection, Vamos a ponerlos en el chat, ya que tengo este problema de conexión y, y puede ser que no les escuche eh, adecuadamente. Así que vamos a tratar de poner la parte de los verbos en pasado en el chat, empezando, ¿verdad? Desde el 1 hasta el 14. So, if you have the answer, you can share with me the answer for the first part, that are the, uh, the verbs. Así que vamos a escribir la primera parte, cuáles son los verbos en pasado, cuál es la forma pasada de estos verbos, y luego yo los voy a colocar en orden debajo de la imagen. Ok, we have the first one. Very good. We have the second one. Okay. 
Okay, very good. Sustain, eight, okay. That, very good. Gave, took, had, liked, offered, Okay, I'm going to write, I'm going to move this one a little bit. So give me a moment because I'm going to write all the verbs here on the this part. So we have in the first one, found. Number two, we have here, transporter. Then I'm going to do it a little bit shorter or a smaller in this case, like this one. Number three is paid or is took. Pay, took. Let me see, number five. Went, sit, stay, walked, gave, offered, followed, had. Eight and light. Very good. All of them are correct because the, these are the verbs in past. That is the form of the verbs in past. Now, with the first one, I mean, with the, this number two, that is the, the true or false, en esta parte del verdadero o el falso. Vamos a ver la primera. Two years ago, Matthew and Fiona went on holiday to Greece. ¿Fueron de vacaciones a Grecia? That is false. En este caso, ¿cómo nos quedaría la oración? La oración de la primera parte. Two years ago, Matthew and Fiona went on holiday where? ¿A dónde fueron ellos? Spain. Spain. Oh, very good. They went to Spain. To Spain. Okay. Went on holiday. To Spain. Very good. Muy bien. Así es como vamos a corregir las oraciones. Ahora, number two. In this case, said, they stay in a big hotel. Se quedaron en un hotel grande. They stayed in a big hotel. True or false? False. Ah, false. Longer. Okay, in this case, ¿en qué se quedaron ellos? In a small cottage. Ah, very good. Okay, in a small cottage. Very good. Number three, let's see. One day, Matthew went for a walk. ¿Salió a caminar Matthew? Mm 
Yes. Yes, that's true. Esa sí está correcta. Next one, number four. On his walk, Matthew found a mountain goat. Encontró una cabra de montaña en su caminata. False. That is false. Very good. Matthew. No, it's a dog. Ah, it's a dog. Very good. Matthew found a dog. In this case, we're going to write a stray dog. Let's see, number five, I guess. The stray dog wake its tail. Movió la cola este perro um, callejero. ¿Verdadero o falso? ¿El perro le movió la cola a Matthew? Verdadero. True. Ok, very good. That's true. So, en ese caso, no vamos a cambiar la oración. Next one. The dog It's went... True. Ok, very good. The stray dog... Uh, in this case, the dog went back to its owners. El perro regresó donde sus dueños. Good, that one is false. Esa es falsa. El perro fue a uh, detrás de ellas, ¿verdad? Casa. So in this case, we are going to say it followed Matthew home. Okay, give me a moment. Just a second. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Give me a moment. I'm going to fix this one. Because it's kind of weird.
Okay, I'm back. Um, I don't know why this um this thing is like this because it doesn't want you to work at this time. Uh, because the whole day it's functioning very well. Well, in this case, I am not in my home all day, but I can be working um all the day with the internet connection and it is functioning very well. But the, the nights, um, it is like this, uh, that it doesn't want it to work. And I don't know why it makes this kind of situations. It's kind of weird, but we are going to continue. So I hope this time it's better because I changed the connection. So we are going to complete this one and we are going to see the topic that we are going to develop to this um, week because we have a new topic. So in this case, we're just going to end this one. So um, we were on the number six, the sentence number six. So we are going to read number seven. It says, Fiona liked the dog and she gave it something to eat. Fiona, a Fiona le gusta el perro y le dio algo de comer. True or false? Okay, oh. that's true. Very good. So in that case, we are not going to change that statement. Now, number eight. The dog didn't eat the food. El perro no se comió la comida. True or false? False. That's false. In this case, uh, she, because that is a girl dog, she ate all the food. So we are going to write here, the dog ate the food. Quickly. Very good, thank you. Quickly, nice. So number nine, it sat outside the front door. Se sentó fuera de la puerta principal. True or false? True. True. Very good. So in this case, we're not going to change anything. Number 10. Thank you. Number 10. At 9.30, it started raining, and so Fiona let the dog indoors. A las nueve y media, empezó a llover. That is? False. False. In that case, it's not, not 9.30. It's 10 p.m., and it said that it was cold. It is not oh. like raining. So in that case, it's just cold. Okay, we're going to change the phrase. And it's going to say, I, at 10 p.m., it was cold. It was cold. So Fiona let the dog inside. Inside. Okay. 11. When the dog came indoors, it sat beside Fiona on the sofa. True or false? Cuando entró, se sentó cerca de Fiona en el sofá. True or false? True. Yeah. true. That one is true. Number 12. They called the dog Hilda. Ellos llamaron a la perra Hilda. True. Ah, true. Very good. Next one. And we're almost done. Hilda stayed outside in the garden. Ella se quedó fuera en el jardín. False. False. That is false. Okay, in this false. one we're okay. We're going to say Hilda stayed um in the cottage with them. With them. Okay. Next one. Matthew and Fiona took Hilda to a dog rescue center. True or false? True. 
True. Next one. The rescue center had a place for Hilda. True or false? ¿Tenía lugar para Hilda en el centro de, de rescate animal? That is false. So in this one, it's going to say, um, they had no place for Hilda. But in this case, I'm going to write the rescue center. I mean, had no place for Hilda. Next one. They transport Hilda to Spain. Ellos transportaron a Hilda hacia España. True. True. Very good. Matthew and Fiona paid a fee of two uh, hundred. Ellos pagaron doscientos de eh, gastos. That's false. Very good. So in this case, they paid. Let me write here. They paid a fee of 500. We have three more and we are done. Solo tres más y terminamos. Now, Hilda lives with Matthew and Fiona. True or false? Hilda vive con Matthew y Fiona. True. Okay. They treat the dog very well. Tratan bastante bien a Hilda. True or false? Oh. True. Okay, very good. And the last one. They love their dog. Aman a su perro. Yes or no? True. True. Okay, very good. So this is the activity that we had for the past week. So in this case, that is the ending of that activity. And we are going to see the new topic. But give me a moment. I'm going to stop this one because I don't move the image to the document because you know that I have um, an image for each week. And in this case, I didn't put the image because I have um, outside the document. And because of the connection, I didn't put the image on the place that it belongs. So I'm going to do it right now. And I'm going to show you the image because I was like thinking about ending the previous activity and then putting the image um, on that part. But I am have the image here and I'm going to show you what is the message for this week and then we're going to see what is the topic that we're going to develop right now. So in this case, it is related to, to this uh, meaning. It says that living is the art of getting used to what we didn't expect. So in this case, it's like we can control of the things that we are doing in our lives. Sometimes we have like a lot of surprises and we didn't think about the, the activities that we have in our lives. In this case, sometimes we see ourselves uh, getting kind of um, overwhelmed about the activities that we are performing in our daily life. But it's uh, the thing with this life, it changed a lot and it has different things for us every single day. So in this case, is an art, like the image said. Living is the art of getting used to what we didn't expect. So that is the phrase for this week. And the topic is the following. There is and there are. 
So we're going to use, or in this case, we're going to talk about the use of there is and there are in English. In this case, uh, talking about context, when we are talking uh, with different people, uh, we're going to talk about the difference between there is and there are. Uh, we are going to see positive sentences. We are going to see some rules. Uh, we are going to talk about negative sentence. Also, we are going to talk about rules. And we are going to talk about the contractions and the questions. Then we are going to talk about the count and non-count nouns, uh, because in this case, it's a topic related to the use of there is and there are, because depending on the uh, things that we are using in that moment in the conversation, that is the use of there is and there are. They have a very specific uses in this topic of the count and non-count nouns. Um, so we're going to understand what are the words that we're going to use with each category of things. Hay nombres contables y nombres no contables en inglés, que en muchos de los casos en otros idiomas no funcionan de esa manera, pero en este caso, ya que estamos aprendiendo inglés, vamos a ver cuáles son los nombres contables y no contables y cuáles son sus categorías. Pero primero vamos a ver cuál es el uso del there is y del there are y por qué utilizamos el there is y el there are con el tema de los nombres contables y no contables, ya que ellos están relacionados eh, unos con los otros. But we are going to find, I mean, we are going to find that information tomorrow in the next session. In this case, we are just going to talk about there is and there are and some of the rules that we need to know about this topic. The first thing that we are going to do is to talk about the difference between there is and there are. So in this case, it says in the information that we can uh, look for, it says that we use there is and there are to say that something exists or doesn't. Básicamente, aquí vamos a, antes de meternos directamente a cuáles son las diferencias, el there is y el there are nos ayudan a decir que una cosa existe o en el otro caso que una cosa no existe de esa forma en la que nosotros lo estamos explicando. In this case, we're going to see the positive sentence. Vamos a ir ahondando en el tema poco a poco. In this case, we have rule number one. And the rule number one said, you should use, aquí vamos a ver algunas de las diferencias. You should use, there is, with singular countable nouns. Vamos a utilizar el there is con los nombres singulares y contables. I'm going to write here this one because it's going to take it like this wrong. So in this case, we have an example. And it says, there is one pen on the table. There is one pen on the table. So in this case, when you have one thing, um, you are going to use there is, but remember that you need to use countable nouns because in the case of the uncountable nouns, 
we don't have like the separation between uh, the singular and a uh, plural nouns. In that case, it's just one category of nouns. So in this case, with singular countable nouns, you are going to use there is. So in that case, you are thinking about the use of there are, that you know already what is the, um, the use that can give to there are. A este punto, donde ya explicamos que el there is se va a utilizar con nombres singulares contables, ya nos podemos hacer a la idea a qué se refiere el uso del there are. But we're going to see rule number two. And it says, you should use there are with plural countable nouns. Ahora, lo contrario, en este caso, el there are lo vamos a utilizar con nombres eh, plurales, pero siempre nombres que se pueden contar, o sea, nombres contables. Example. There are five pencils in the box. There are five pencils in the box. Ahora, tenemos una regla número tres. Rule three. And it's related to the use of the there is. But in this case, it is not with um, countable nouns. In this case, it's related to non-countable nouns. So you should use there is. with uncountable nouns. En este caso, el there is lo vamos a utilizar con dos cosas. El primero con nombres singulares contables y luego lo vamos a utilizar con todos los nombres no contables. Y vemos el ejemplo. And it says, there is milk in the glass. There is milk in the glass. Ahora, ¿cómo creamos eh, oraciones negativas? Remember that you have the link of this document so you can access to the information, whatever you want. Ustedes ya tienen el enlace del documento, así que ustedes pueden accesar a él en este momento y pueden ir viendo cómo se le agrega la información. So don't worry about that. So, in this case, negative sentences. We have, in this case, the rule number four. Miss, uh, no, disculpe, me. puede pegarlo en WhatsApp. Again? Sí. Puede pegarlo en WhatsApp. Sí, lo voy a volver a mandar después de la sesión. Okay, gracias. You're welcome. So, in the negative sentences, we have that in the rule number four, it's um, about to construct, to construct a negative sentence to say that something doesn't exist, you should add not after is or are. That is pretty simple. It's like creating a... A, a statement with the different tenses. Es lo mismo, solo agregamos el not con la frase que ya tenemos. There is not, there are not. It's the same thing. Please excuse me. For the okay. different using there is or this is or this incorrect to say this is no that is correct to say this is but you are referring to something that you have in your power in this moment so in this case i can use this one this is a piece of paper esta es una eh, un pedazo de papel pero si en ese caso yo estoy digamos en una tienda yo voy a decir this is um i don't know um glass case Esta, hay, o sea, en el caso de que yo lo vaya a comprar, del que yo lo vaya a comprar, there is, hay, 
hay un eh, ¿qué? Un celular, por ejemplo. There is a cell phone. Hay un celular. Y esta yo la tengo en mi poder. This is. Esta es. Hay esta. This is o oh, eh, this, porque cambia la, la, la forma en la que la construimos. En el caso del this is, es para singulares. Y these are para, eh, no, this is es para singulares. These are es para plurales. También tenemos el those, que es para los que están más lejos, ¿verdad? Esos son, aquellos son. Y es diferente con el uso del this, uh, del there is y del there are, porque la traducción básicamente esto es, en el this is, these are, esto, estos son, those are, esos son, que son los que están más lejos. Y en el caso del there is y del there are, hay uno, hay varios. Es como estar hablando de la cantidad, o sea, haciendo re, eh, recalcar que hay varios productos de uno solo. I don't know if it's kind of clear. No, yet, no, yet. Ah. Because you say something about the distance. And mm -hmm. this is when I am when I am using something or, or when I have something in front of me. Yes, when you have like very close to you. Okay, and this there is when I am seeing the, the thing, but it's not too close. It is not oh, like, no, it is not like related to the distance. It's related to the quantity. Está relacionado con las cantidades. Usted lo puede tener cerca, pero habla de las cantidades. Cuando estamos hablando de eh, que hay un celular, por ejemplo, yo puedo tener eh, diferentes elementos en una mesa y yo voy a decir, there is a cell phone on the table. There is. A cell phone on the table. Hay un celular en la mesa. Y yo puedo decir, this is my cell phone. Este es mi teléfono. There, um, there is a cell phone on the table. Hay un celular en la mesa. This is my cell phone. Este es mi teléfono. Podemos decir que el there is está relacionado a cantidad. Y el this is, these are, también lo podemos uh, relacionar con la pertenencia, cuando algo nos pertenece o cuando estamos eh, observando o tenemos algo, pero es diferente. Now it's oh, better. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, but could you, could you write that in the, in the document? The differences. Yes. Ok, I'm going to do it. Les voy a poner las diferencias yes. entre el uso del this is y el there is, there are. But I'm not going to do it right now because if you can see, uh, it's time for my next uh, session. So we are going to end here and I'm going to put the information and the document so you can uh, check the information there. So we're going to end the session here and we are going to see each other on the session number two, that is tomorrow. So have a good night and see you tomorrow. Good night. 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 Good night.